when you are lonely and confused. You need a comforter. And the comforter is the Holy Spirit. Here is a lady that was lonely and confused. They called her the Samaritan woman. But let's see how Jesus comforted her. And let's see if we can't be comforted. Because I think what he comforted her with is the new covenant. Without even using the term. But it was the power of the new covenant. Let's go to John chapter 4 and begin at verse 10. But let's talk to the Father. Father, we thank you. We thank you over and over and over and over and over again. For Father, you have been good to us. You weren't only good to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. David, Samuel, and Solomon. You've been good to us. We are our, we've seen and we are, we've, have received a testimony of how good you've been to us. Now, Father, we pray that you would help us understand how important it is to have your Holy Spirit. So, Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. John 4, 10. Beloved, in these past weeks, we've come a long way all the way from Abrahamic covenant to the Mosaic covenant to the new covenant. And now we kind of stuck. It's a good stuck in the new covenant. But let's see if we can't get a better picture of that new covenant. Because here is Jesus and the only reason he came was to get us back to heaven. But to do that, he had to get us in the covenant so he could get us back to heaven. In, and John, a beautiful story, John 4 and uh, verse 10. Uh, and let me see if we can set the scene here. Jesus has said that uh, he had to go through Samaritan. It was necessary because there was a Samaritan woman there was a need of comfort. Jesus will go out of his way to bring you comfort. He didn't do like the rest of the Jews, these leaders, these high mucky mucks. They would go around Samaritan, add more steps to their journey, just not to come close to a Samaritan didn't even want the dirt of the Samaritans on their feet. So, but here's Jesus. And I think he wants us to be just like him, go out of our way. If we see somebody lonely and needed and needing comfort, that we go out of our way and we bring them the comfort of Jesus Christ. I think that's what he would want us to do. In fact, I pretty well know that's what he would want us to do. You say, how you know? I'm glad you asked me. He says here in verse 3 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comfort, 
who comforts us in all of our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction <clears throat> with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So God's comfort you. And anybody lonely, confused, uh, uh, needing comfort, then we ought to be like Jesus. We ought to take it to him. But let's look at this new covenant. And by the way, we're supposed to be sharing the gospel. Because that's the only thing going to bring people comfort. It, it, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can give them food and that'll satisfy the inside. We can give them clothes that'll satisfy the outside. But unless you can satisfy the soul, we haven't done much good. And we got the living word to hand to them to put in their souls that their souls can also be comforted. Listen to this. <clears throat> Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees and had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, though Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were, he left Judea and went away again into Galilee. And he had passed, and he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaritan called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that, jo that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, being weary from his journey, and sitting thus by the well, it was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaritan to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. God didn't want anybody around to change the focus. So he sent all of them all 12 disciples into Sychar to get food. And while he's here alone with this woman on this well, and he does something very strange. He says, give me a drink. Now she could look at him and tell that he's a Jew just by how he's dressed. Verse 9 said, Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you being a Jew ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Here we go again. This living water, it, it, it brings us to the new covenant. It brings us to the point where Nicodemus was. Uh, Nicky, you need to be born again because unless one is born again, you won't even see the kingdom of God. And I am saying the kingdom of God, I'm saying the new covenant, and I'm saying the Holy Spirit, and I also saying this living water. Because this Holy Spirit is the one that's going to produce this living water. If you knew who I was, you'd ask me. And so he has piqued her curiosity. And so the woman said to him, Sir, um, give me this water. In fact, let me back up to verse 13. Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him 
shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. All right, we're getting closer and closer to that new covenant. We're getting closer and closer to being born again. We're getting closer and closer to the gift of the Holy Spirit just by believing in Jesus Christ. If you just, just believe that he is the Christ, and if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And that's what's about to happen to this woman because she said to him, give me this water. She believed that he could give her living water. And that's all it takes is just believing. And she believed. And when she believed, something happened. And let me tell you what I think happened. I think the Holy Spirit, because she asked him to give her this water that he gave it to her he gave her the living water that was going to be springing up in her unto eternal life the living water the Holy Spirit the living water the new covenant the living water being born again was going to change her life it changes so much that woman left there running. She left there and she left her water pots. So whatever she came to quench her thirst in the middle of a day because she was ashamed, she was embarrassed, so she didn't go to the well the same time the other women went. And here God has given her exactly what she needs, and that is living water. And that's what you need. You need this living water. You need the Holy Spirit. You need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And believing in him, you will have eternal life. Springing up to you, springing up in you unto eternal life. And all you got to do is just believe. So, beloved, let's let's pray. And I, and and if you believe, you will be put into this new covenant. Let's pray. Father, here we are. And Father, we thank you for the new covenant. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Holy Spirit bringing us life. And life that springs up in spring up in us unto eternal life. So Father, I thank you. Father, I pray that you would bless your people. That they won't just exist, but they'll live. If they get eternal life, if they get the living water, if they get the new covenant, if they get born again, they will be in the kingdom of God. So we thank you and we love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.